these are all of the flashcards that I've made for the SPI. It's ridiculous. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra and today I'm going to be telling you guys how I passed my SPI on the first try and tips on how you can pass your SPI on the first time as well. In order to become a certified ultrasound technician, you have to pass the SPI. The SPI is Sonographic Principles and Instrumentations Exam. You will be tested on the physics of ultrasound and also transducers, ergonomics, quality assurance, and things that involve ultrasound. Your test will be broken up into five parts. There are five content areas. Number one is clinical safety, patient care, and quality assurance. Number two is physical principles. Number three is ultrasound transducers. Number four is imaging principles and instrumentation. And finally, number five, the largest part, Doppler imaging concepts. That is the most critical part of your exam. So first, before I get into telling you guys how you can pass the exam and how I pass my exam, I'm going to be showing y'all the study tools that I use that helped me study for the SPI. Most schools that I know of use this the green book, which is Understanding Ultrasound Physics by Edelman. This is the book. It is around 550 pages. The last 100 or 200 pages are practice questions and the rest of the book is solely material that you have to study. Honestly, this is really all you need. They also have the Red Edelman book. I don't really think it's that beneficial. I've had students that's in my class use it and they said that it didn't really help them as much. But honestly, this is all you really need in order to pass the test. If you read this entire book front to back over and over and over again, I promise you, you will pass your test. The second set of study materials that I used were these flashcards that were given to me by my instructor. They are really, really thick. <laughs> this is like 200 pages of flashcards. I wouldn't say that these really helped me because I cannot use flashcards that have too many words on them. It's too distracting. I'd rather just read the definition and let it be that. But it could help you if you are a person who likes to have a full definition or a full explanation of what certain things mean. The third study tool that I used to study for the SPI was this red book. This is not the red book that I was talking about before, but this is just a book full with practice questions. It is Ultrasound Physics Review. This is a really good book to use in order to study for the exam. Honestly, I used this book about the week before my exam and I feel like it helped me a lot because it words the test in different ways that the actual green book that I just showed you doesn't word it. You always want to look at different interpretations of how the questions could be worded on the test. They will try to trick you with different words. So you always want to remember the different synonyms or if it has three or four names for it, remember all of those names. And I think this is the perfect book for helping you to remember all of the names that they use. My fourth tool that I use for studying the SPI is this green book. And this is a condensed version of the other green book, which is Understanding Ultrasound Physics. This one is Sonography Principles and Instrumentations Registry Review Workbook, fourth edition and I will link all of these books in the description box. My fifth and final tool for studying for the SPI is using flashcards. These are all of the flashcards that I've made for the SPI. It's ridiculous. I've made so many flashcards. I don't even know how many flashcards this possibly could be. I've wrote a whole notebook full of all of the information from the Understanding Ultrasound Physics book and I still did flashcards and ended up with this many flashcards. So definitely look into those study tools for studying for the SPI. Now we're going to get into what helped me pass my SPI on the first try. The first thing that I did to pass my SPI on the first try was study the book front to back. It is very, very important that you know every single thing that is in that book. There is nothing that is not important in the book. This one right here, just in case you guys forgot. Highlight things that you don't understand. As you can see, I highlighted a lot in this book. Don't be afraid to write in it. Unless you plan on selling it after, honestly, 
you could write in this book make notes in it the second thing that helped me pass my SPI on the first try is studying a few chapters every day. If you're a type of person that loves to cram before your exam, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be kind of hard to pass the exam. It is a 60% pass rate for the SPI, I believe. I could be wrong, but from what I know, it is a 60% pass rate, which means 40% of people do not pass on the first try. Going in unprepared is the worst thing that you could do. If you study a few chapters every day, it would help you get those concepts into your long-term memory. With this subject, you have to have it in your long-term memory because it's a complex career in general. Create a consistent studying routine and stick to that studying routine. The longer you wait to take your exam, the more you're gonna forget. The third thing that helped me pass my SPI was making flashcards. Of course, I showed y'all my flashcards. I would not recommend making that many flashcards because I did not even go over all of those flashcards. I made them for no reason because when you make that many flashcards, it's hard for you to read through all of those flashcards a day. So I would recommend making flashcards on the concepts that you don't really understand. That way you're able to go over them and it's not overwhelming you. The fourth thing that helps me pass my SPI on the first try is going to tutoring. I know it can be very intimidating going to a professor or a instructor and asking for help. If you're confused on anything, and I mean anything, it doesn't even have to be ultrasound. You need to go ask for help because you're spending your hard earned money to get that education. So if you are confused, you need to get help. My fifth and final tip that helped me pass my SPI was doing practice questions. After you study for the SPI, it's definitely important for you to go over practice questions. It helps you get a gist of how the test may formulate its questions. Of course, it's not gonna be exactly the same way that the test would ask the questions, but with those books that I showed you, they had a lot of good practice questions in them that helped me look at each definition and each concept in a different way. They may word the question differently or use another word to represent what it is asking for. So I hope this video helped you guys on your journey to become an ultrasound technician. It is a very, very big deal to pass the SPI. So I wish all of you good luck on your exams. And I ask you to comment down below the best tip that you heard from this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.